I'm happy to have on the show today, Juan Carlos Diaz. He's the co-founder of Luxuan Energy. They sell energy with no upfront investment. And he was just telling me a really interesting story around fundraising and what happened. So Juan, can you share that story with us? Yeah, perfect, Chad. First of all, thank you for inviting me to the podcast. It's really an honor to be contributing with you guys. I've heard many of the stories that you put in your, in your page and it's, it's very amazing and I'm glad to be here. Okay, so, so I, I start talking about little, uh, our story, which we already, who we are. We started the company five years ago, we were three founders. And what we do, Chad, is we sell energy, as you said, with no upfront investment for the off-day. Okay? Starting a, a, an energy company, and well, we do this putting panels heat on top of the rooftop appliance, mainly C and I lights, through PPA vehicles or, or loan financing the assets and the energy generated. Uh, we sell them in a lower cost, so they didn't, they don't need to put any investment or upfront cost. So that's, that's what we do. And that's what we were doing since the beginning. The story begins with us trying to, to like to go to the market and see if the idea really works. The Excel is magical, but when you start an energy company, you need lots of cash in order to start your business. So we were three founders. We managed to have $30,000 in, in the bank to start a new project. We went to see three different clients at the beginning. It was two of them were standalone clients. We put the installation for them, 10 year contract, and that's it. And the other one was a guy that had like 40 or 50 stores across Mexico. And he told us like, if this works, then you can put panels in all my stores. Okay, let's do it. That was a, a little strategy that we made. So we put the panels and a couple of months later, he came to our office and, and tell, I'm in love with what you're doing. I'm paying cheaper energy and, and I like this transition to new energies, renewable energies. So please put in all my stores. And I remember when, when, when he said that the amount that we needed of cash to put the, the panels, it was like, I don't know, like half a million dollars to, to put in all, in all the store. And we didn't have any money. But the best part of it was that we really validated our thesis in our business, that there was in fact people willing to change their energy supplier for these young guys putting panels in the roof and selling energy at long-term contract. So that was the first validation that we had, and that was the most important one because we realized that there was a market for this. So, and, 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 and obviously in that part, it detonated for us thinking that, okay, we need to raise money if we want to put panels this company. So that's when the first struggle really begins because raising money in Mexico in this industry was very complicated. We started seeing different things of, I don't know, BC funding or private equity money or whatever, but it was complicated. So what we did was we put, we created a, this private fund of friends and family. We raised money in this fund that was not related to our company and the projects, when they were really working, where they went, when, when we signed with the client, we sell those projects to this fund. And in that trade-off, we had a little spread and with that spread, we can pay our sg and &A and other costs or, or expenses that we had in the business. When we did that, Chad, it was also very important because we validated the second point of the business that there were investors willing to put their money at risk in order to change enough taker of how he or she consumes energy. And, and they were receiving a payment by doing that in form of interest, in form of dividends and whatever. So we started working a lot with, with these friends and family, but sadly our friends and family are not the richest person in the world. So we had a, a a maximum limit so we can reach it was, I think, half a million dollars or $600,000. I don't remember exactly well. But we were also realizing, Chad, that the more money that we yeah. asked for friends and family, the more that we were killing ourselves because the dividends were sky high, the, 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 the rates that they were asking. So it was very complicated. So we entered another stage. We say, okay, there's clients that want their product. There's investors that are willing to finance these type of projects. We need bigger investors, right? So we started going to lots of conventions and I was this, I, I am the CFO. So I was very in charge of this thing, conventions and LinkedIn asking for, for advice, different people, whatever, all the adventure. 
in 2020, in March, before the pandemic begins, I went to a very interesting convention in South Mexico in a place called Merida, but it's beautiful, beautiful, beautiful pe people there. And, and it was a very interesting convention because it was of blended finance investing in, in Latam. And there were a lot of banks of a lot of countries and people and entrepreneurs. And, and I managed to, to, to start building relationships with funds that I didn't knew they existed because they were, I don't know, one, one fund from Japan or one fund from Germany and Canada and that I didn't knew that their, their existence. And they were interested in these type of projects specifically of, of what we were doing. But the thing was, Chad, that pandemic begins and for us and of course for all the world, it was a very, very sad environment that it was living in, in every business and people and, and it was catastrophic. So many deals that we can, they were punished, you know, we, we couldn't land any, any, any of those deals. But at the end of that year, we landed a, a medium sized deal with a bank, a local bank in Mexico that they were willing to finance our projects before construction in order to build a little, you know, a project that was working to sell to other investors. So when we did that, that operation with these guys, we validated the third timer business. And that was the final validation and the most important one, because now you have all your stakeholders completely aligned. For one side, you have your client consuming the air. For other, for other side, you have your, your, like the buyer of the, of the portfolio that is willing to invest that money, the second validation. And the third one was that there was a bank that was willing to lend money in order to, for you, for us to buy the products put them in the solar installations and while they're working, sell them to a different investor. And that was the like complete cycle of the validation. On top of it, you have your operation working really well, your commercial team, your finance team. And that was like our, our, our big validation. So when we did that, we started building chat, very big projects in Mexico. We completely expanded our capacities to levels that we didn't imagine in that time. And that was very important. Because now we could go for international investors and say, look, I just, I, I don't, I just don't have like two installations. I have 50 installations perfectly working and I'm willing to do 10,000 installations. I need more cap. So that's what we, we managed to achieve by the end of 2021. And well, the, the rest of the story was like searching for bigger funds in order to, to enter with us. It was complicated because here in Mexico, the regulatory environment was not helping a lot. And, and it was difficult for foreign investors to, to trust Mexico in, in the energy sector, but it was a challenge like to, to, like to move forward with this. And well, in 2022, we start talking with this very, very big fund called this National Climate Fund. They're from Switzerland and well, mostly I guess was that are from, from UK and the United States. And we closed the, the deal with them. A couple of weeks ago, funny story, like of three, four weeks ago, final, final, the final closure. And we closed a round of $43 million in order to, to finance a big pipeline that we have right now, sign and in process of signing. That. I like how you went for an unconventional route of raising money, which is I'm going to prove that I have customers first. Then once I've signed these customers and I know I can have this dollar, this dollar amount, now I'm going to go raise money. And you don't hear that very often. Yeah. With, with no upfront cost with your setup, how are you making your margin then? So for example, the, we go to our clients and, and, and we make this analysis consumption of the tariffs or the rates that they're paying energy. And I don't know, for example, this client, it's paying the kilowatt hour or megawatt hour at I don't know, a uh, hundred US dollars and we go and say, okay, you're now going to pay it at 70 US dollars. I'm going to make the investment and we sign a contract for 10, 15, 20 years. And in that way, he or she is changing the energy supplier. And in that way, us are collecting the, the cash flow, the receivables of the energy produced in that, in that installation. So the difference. Uh, the, the, they're still saving money, but there's some sort of slight margin that you make. So let's say it was a hundred and now it's 70, then what? $15 goes to you. How, how exactly does that look? Well, 
look at like in, like like an investment chart in the, in in like in in simpler terms. Imagine that the capex or the cost of the installation would be I don't know a thousand dollars, and you sign the contract for fifteen years. So every year you are receiving I don't know two hundred uh, two thousand five hundred dollars. So at year four, you basically pay back your return. And well, pay back your, your investment. And now further, you have all this cash flow that it's going to be profit for you. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah, it's an interesting setup. And I mean, they're, they're, at the end of the day, they end up saving money over time. Yeah, that's a beauty because the client has a monstrous energy saving in, in his fees or her accounting. But also, like this mechanism is very popular in, in a lot of energy developed countries. In US, you see this project products a lot. The product by itself, it's called PPA, Power Purchase Agreement. It's very, very common in Canada and US and UK, Germany, Europe, Australia. But the, the other interesting part of the saving cash flow for the company, it's that you're, you're saving the world in, in, in a little installation, little installation with no upfront investment, you're changing your energy to clean sources. And that really helps when you see that thing on a massive scale, you're saving tons and tons and tons of CO2 emissions that really contribute to the conservation of our environment. And that's, that's also a beauty that it's transmitted to our clients because they are the ones that making that, that are making that decision. You know, and, and that's also very important to transmit for, for, for our market and, and our strategy. Are you operating exclusively in Mexico right now? We are right now exclusively in Mexico, but we have traveled a lot to Colombia and Ecuador also to, to, to see the, the, how can we work. Right now we're in a stage that we need to capital to work. We just close around. So we need to really put the money with our mouth, when, where our mouth is and, and really keep these things working. But yes, definitely in, in a couple of years, we're going to start aiming other companies. Are you seeing a lot of demand growth? Yeah, yeah, really. In in Mexico, you see, it's a beautiful market, really. It's a humongous market. We are 150 million brothers, Mexican brothers and sisters, and and every day are burning more and more. The industry is growing a lot. So now you see a lot of new infrastructure of energy to support housing, to support schools, to support industry. So there's, if, if we... Like in the best case scenario that if we can go for a huge amount of megawatts deployed in Mexico, we're not going to have like the 1% of the market. It's, it's amazing, huge, the, the market. So like strategy wise, it's right now with solar panels and now we're also implementing solutions of storage and, and green hydrogen, but, but it's another technology, but we were going to try to diversify here in Mexico and then start working with other broader countries in order to help the, the, the interests. Is this your first company? No, Chef. <laughs> I, I have, I've been entrepreneur since I was very young, like 15 years old. And I've been different companies in real estate. I've been in important products. I've been in, in e-commerce and a lot of things, but I, I fell in love with Luxon since the beginning because one of the things that I most like is finance, fundraising strategy and that stuff. And and, and the thing that we're doing here is, yes, we're selling energy, but the backside of the company works like a financial institution. And I love how the, how the things that we're working. I was going to say, I mean, in the theme of failing to success, it sounds like this wasn't your first business. Because if you had, I'm sure there's been a lot that it went up and down and you figured it out along the way. And now you're like, okay, now I know I'm going to make this thing work. I have the right industry. I have the right product. I'm going to capitalize it properly and we'll see if we can scale this. Yeah, yes, yes, and 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 but for example, I, I'm telling you the, the fun part of the story, like the the Luxon stories is the beginning till now. But really, the past months or the past years were not easy years. We are not the the, the story of fundraising, fundraising. You know, I have heard a lot that like, oh, it's super cool raising money and VCs, and man, that was not our story. We suffered a lot in, in the fundraising phases, and. I actually, I, I love this book of, of this guy called Ken Morowitz from A16C, the DC, the DC firm. This guy really exemplifies 
the sad part of the entrepreneurship, like the difficult part that he puts it in this book. I love, I, I, I honestly, I can read that book like 10 times. And every time I read it, it's like, wow, this guy is amazing. And I, I tend to look like a lot, like what, how he was feeling in that stuff. Yes. So from having this experience of many businesses, not all of them working, what would your advice be to new entrepreneurs? Okay. I think like for us entrepreneurs, it's very important to know that whatever your idea is at the end of the road, you need to be made, made turn off that to know that you are constantly evolving and transition. Your business is transitioning in a way that you didn't plan to, to, to do it. Things are going to go north, south or whatever. But you need to really understand that the business is going to be transitioning and you need to adapt to that transition, be resilient to that type of transition that their, that their business is growing one or for one side. And the other right. side, it's a constant validation of your business model. I, I, I often go to tell advice to young entrepreneurs and people that often come and, Hey, what do you think about this and whatever? And, and the thing about the transition and the constant validation is very important because you're so in love with your idea that you forgot to validate with your market if that's really what the market is looking for or really what your team is, is looking for or, or, or you personally. So that constant validation, it's just keeping the morale up. It's just making that checks in order to, to, to say, okay, this is getting good. This is getting good. I'm transitioning, but I'm constantly validating my business model. And that really helps you interact and with, with all your stakeholders and your, and your, and your mission and your vision. And that really helps you like grow maturity in the, in your, in your same business. It's very good advice. The, the constant validation and being ready to adapt and evolve. It's extremely important to even keep your head above water because there are times when it's really tough to be an entrepreneur. So Juan, if our listeners wanted to get in touch with Lux and Energy or yourself, how could they do so? Yeah, Chad, I'm very open to, to, to like get to know more people and help. I was in a position not long before and I'm in a position that I, I'm, I, I'm constantly asking for help, for advice, because there's a lot of people that have crossed the things that you are trying to cross right now. And it's very important to know that you can reach them. I honestly, I'm completely open to talk with any of you guys, and people that, that want a, a sort of advice or I don't know, some heads up or, or something, whatever. I have my LinkedIn, my LinkedIn account, my, my mail, I can give it to you, Chad, so you can put it, I know, in, in this brief description or yeah, or, or I, I think that that will work. Mail or, or LinkedIn, I, I check them often and that I think it will work. Perfect. Well, thank you, Juan, for coming on the show and thank you everybody for listening to another episode of Failing to Success. Make sure to subscribe. I'm your host, Chad Kalecki, and we'll see you next time.